Sounds good. Hi, everybody. This is uh, the sprint planning for quizzical purpose uh, for Chord Sprint uh, 4. Uh, just to get started, um, we finished Sprint 3 on Friday, and um, that was uh, pretty successful. Um, we got a, a lot done then. Um, if we look at the, uh, let's see, which, which chart? Yeah, we got more. Um, we increased our velocity a little bit. I think that's mainly because we didn't have other um, other events like the Volta lockdown. Or well, the Volta lockdown didn't really involve people, but um, we had other conferences and things during sprints one and two. Um, so back to the cord board. Um, we have a task prior prioritization doc. Um, one thing I'll uh, uh, let people know about is um, I brought up at the last meeting uh, about changing the start and end days of sprints to be a Tuesday, Wednesday rather than a Monday uh, or a Friday, Monday. Um, I've updated the end uh, or the, those dates on the 6.0 planning document. Um, so basically what this means is this sprint is going to be a little bit longer by a day or two. And then the future sprints um, are going to be, I think we're going to lose one week in the feature free sprint. Um, and then there's going to be an extra, a few extra days after the release or before the release where the, uh, the sprint six is going to end. So, um, and then we'll have a week in between the um, uh, sprint six for quizzical purpose and the 7.0 sprint one. Um, if the, I just want to let people know about that. If they think it looks good, um, we'll go with this plan. Um, so one of the things that might uh, add a little bit of complexity is if you want to make a formal release for the uh, ABC deadline. Uh, maybe we can talk about that offline. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you want to, I'm still not sure what those that deadline is. So um, let's let's uh, decide that. Maybe maybe platform call on on Wednesday. Um, okay. Okay. So um, everyone, I think, has looked through their uh, priorities in this document and um, gotten a chance to make sprint items um, in Jira. Uh, I wanted to go through here and um, see if there's anything in the backlog that needed to be made into the um, uh, needed to be added to the the current sprint. These are items that were in sprint three that didn't uh, make it or didn't get done. Um, so to start off, it um, looks like a few of these are Scots. Can you talk about them and let me know if they need to be? Sure. So the, yeah, the first um, three of these are all marked low priority. That's why I didn't bring them over. OK. Uh, so the first, um, do you want more information on them or move on? No, if they don't need to be moved and you've reviewed them, then that's fine. Um, OK. The uh, next one is mine, 2776. That's, um, Bringing the mass containers up, um, I, we still don't know how we're going to deploy mass with this. So I, I and that's low priority. So I'm going to wait on that. I, I think I need to get with Luca to just talk about that. Um, is Jonah there? Twenty eight fifty three. Yeah, um, I think we could, we should maybe uh, close this ticket and create more specific ones work that needs to be done because it's kind of a ticket that could just last forever so um, maybe I'll close that one out okay that's great um close it out and then or yeah uh, won't fix or whatever and uh, the next ones are I think Lucas um, and are related to the ABC deployment so um, I think we'll wait on those uh, until he's available to talk about them and the last one is this Kailash. Uh, this is. Yeah. Should this be moved into into scope? Two nine five one. I actually got it done last Friday, so I'm closing it out right now. Okay, that's great. Alrighty, um, short backlog. That's great. Um, everything else that got moved in, these are all things that were moved that were in Sprint three. They got moved in from the backlog. So. Um, alrighty, uh, we'll go through and look at the things that um, that have been. Uh, decided for this sprint. Uh, Gopi? 
Yeah, so um, like Scott mentioned in the uh, build channel, um, I and Scott uh, have been diving a little deep into um, the architectural semantics of uh, how uh, XOS uh, objects map to Kubernetes objects while trying to keep them loosey goosey because we don't want very tight dependency. Uh, I'll continue to do that today. Um, and we are talking as a team tomorrow uh, about uh, uh, the synchronizer architecture. Uh, based off that, uh, I think some tasks will emerge. And it's likely uh, that uh, I and Scott will add some tasks for ourselves uh, to implement for the upcoming release, uh, for the upcoming sprint. Uh, so I've just assigned myself a, a broad task to go through the document and identify tasks out of them. Okay, thanks, Gopi. Deployments and build up automation. Uh, maybe those items Luca had will get moved there. Um, and loading provisioning, expanding QA coverage. Um, uh, is Suchitra there? For Kailash? Yes. Yes. Um, so, in this, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yes, we can hear you, Suchitra. Okay. So in this sprint, uh, our main focus will be migrating the jobs, existing jobs that we have to JJB, uh, the remaining jobs. And also, uh, Tio also mentioned that the, he made some changes to the APIs, and which is, which is complete for the root subscriber. So we there are many test cases that we need to update. So most of the stories here, I think two of the stories here are updating the API test sanity suite and also the uh, subscriber chain. Uh, this is the regular one without no, no VSG, the regular model. And uh, we need to make sure that these are running on the existing pods and also on our virtual deployments. So that will be the main focus and also make the API sanity test suite available for the uh, uh, the new JJP builder and try to run those uh, for the check in, I mean, for the get patches, patch sets. Uh, and then there are two other tasks which are migrate, sorry, which have been uh, from the previous sprint which we couldn't complete. One is the uh, soak, soak pod, which we are generating continuous traffic. So we were able to finally generate traffic but with few limitations and uh, we plan to get a report out of it and uh, hopefully we can share it and present it in one of the meetings in the QA meetings or the TST. So that's the plan. So that that is another uh, task and another task that we will be working on is to update the sanity physical pod with the new changes which we have been working on and off and due to these changes we were not able to complete successfully. So I think that is all. It Okay, um, there are two items, 2958 and 2769, that both are unassigned. Um, okay. Are yeah, we will, we will discuss internally and then we'll assign accordingly. Okay, that sounds good. Um, moving on, fabric features and improvement. Andrea, are you on? Um, yes, I am. Sorry, I was muted. Um, so regarding all of these, uh, basically these are some uh, new features that we are trying to introduce. And um, the idea, they're mainly related to multicast, which uh, I, myself, uh, or I'm working on, and also Pierre is working on, is working on and we're going to do a little bit of uh, handover from him to me also on some tasks, because he's very much focused on his uh, PhD defense lately. And uh, there might be a few items that are not listed, uh, especially regarding bug fixes that, uh, as usual, is uh, very difficult to track. Okay, just make sure the two of you spend a bunch of time fixing a bug that it ends up with a Jira ticket. Sure, okay, sounds good. Okay, thanks. Thanks for that. Uh, M chord, is ping ping there? Yes. Uh, yes, I'm here. Uh, so uh, this sprint is mainly focused on the VNF. So we have a well-known bug is uh, when the first time the UE attached it will definitely fail. Uh, so need to work with the sprint to fix this one uh, for the release. And uh, the second task is uh, for the demo we have a shortcast. Um, 
to make one inner bit work and the program inside to work with two EPC. It's a, a very unstable and it can be used. So we need to face, fix all uh, those shortcuts uh, to make it uh, really works. So this is the main uh, tasks for the this sprint. Okay, thanks, Ping Ping. Uh, maintenance, uh, Andy. So um, I found right before the call that uh, the VTN service hasn't completely been updated to use multi-struct log. It's still using the old logger in places. And um, so if you configure the synchronizer with uh, the, the logging block and the configuration, then you don't get a lot of messages that are actually pretty helpful. So we need to um, do a little bit of work there to get it uh, to log those messages. Okay, thanks, Andy. Um, I don't think Mateo's on. Um, I think both of these were brought over from the previous sprint and uh, talked about them there. Um, Scott? Yeah, so these next two I have as, uh, well, the first one I have is a higher priority to look into this uh, BSG service instance deletion thing. Um, I started looking into that on Friday. I wasn't able to reproduce it seems like there used to be a bug that you would delete a VSG instance or a service instance, and then the system would end up in inconsistent state doing, due to uh, tags being left behind. And that would occasionally cause problems for uh, QA, for example, when they uh, wanted to delete all of the uh, VSGs on, on a pod. So I was going to look into that. Uh, the second one is low priority, which is uh, some uh, APIs return empty lists when uh, credentials aren't given. Uh, this just generally confuses users of the a API because they'll make a they'll make an API call, they'll get back no results, and they'll think there's nothing in the data model for that object when there really is. Um, so part of that is to discuss with others to find out how we want to fix that, and then I think the actual fix would be relatively simple. Okay, thanks, Scott. Uh, moving on, our court service. Uh, this is um, this is another thing of Mateo's. Um, uh, he didn't leave. I think this also got brought over from the previous uh, sprint. I think the idea here is that the Arcord uh, subscriber models are loaded from the profile right now in the Helm charts, and and I guess in in the old profile as well. And it would be nice to break that out into a completely separate service independent of the profile that you could load on okay. its own. So this is for creating, um, if this is sort of the bring up process or the test, is this a testing focused thing or is it a something that would I think it's a deployment to... focus, just trying right. to clean up the, um, the, the Helm chart for the profile and not have it like a hidden service in there. Okay. Alrighty, moving on. Um, let's see. Uh, deploy XOS and ONOS using Helm charts. Um, so the first one is what I am working on now, which is just integrating VTN and ONOS with the OpenStack Helm deployment. I made some good progress on that at the last sprint, so I hope that I'm uh, pretty close to at least having a, a, a prototype that I can toss out there and, and we can start looking at in more detail. Um, 2954 is just documenting what I did so other people can hopefully reproduce it. Um, and 2952 is, so previously the way we loaded images into Glance is we had this uh, directory on the head node opt XOS images where we would plop these images and then XOS um, the, the directory would get mounted into the XOS container and it would see them, the images that were in there and upload them. I mean, the, the sorry, the OpenStack synchronizer container would, would take care of uploading them. Um, I don't think we want to use that exact same strategy of, of having um, 
of copying the images to a directory on the host because now we're running on Kubernetes clusters and there's multiple nodes and we don't know exactly which node is going to have the, the OpenStack synchronizer running on it. So I think what we'll need to do if we want to have that same behavior is put the, um, the images in some other sort of volume. Um, so, so Andy, um, just because I'm somewhat familiar with this, is would it, this also be an opportunity to make those images be tied to the service version, so that rather because previously the the OpenStack uh, can, uh, VM images were part of the profile, and so the profile also specified the version of the service, but the service, if we're thinking about from a service developer standpoint, they might want to come along and have a version um, service VNF image as part of the service, not as part of the profile. Yeah, I remember we talked about that in the past, and it's, it's good that you're bringing that up again. I think we should um, think about this story, maybe take a step back and think about the whole story of um, how we're going to handle VNF images in um, in this new world of, of Helm deployment. Um, okay. I think that's a, a bigger topic in this, too, in that there's a lot of configuration stuff associated with a service that's currently coming from the master uh, values.yaml file uh, for the for the whole deployment, and it seems like some of that configuration stuff um, should be service specific. So maybe maybe instant or, or images fall in with that same other remainder of configuration stuff. I, I wonder if this is almost a versioning discussion rather than a discussion of uh, maybe it, maybe it plays into that to some extent. Yeah, I think there's it might not be a blocker for twenty nine fifty two, but we definitely need to talk about that. A higher level story and, and make sure we're on the same page with regards to versioning. So yeah, I'll, I'll create another JIRA ticket to keep track of that discussion too and, and get a document started. Okay, thanks Andy. Um, 2847 is um, HA the Postgres database. I still want to look into this but it's a low priority topic because um, I've been pulled into testing and QA and JGB land for a while. Um, core 2909 is adding build targets um, for building Helm charts on top of Kubernetes scenarios. Uh, I, I have this um, mostly done. Um, I've really run into an issue with the way that we've been structuring some of the variables in the Kubernetes repo. Um, there's a lot of replication I'm having to do and I, I'm not too happy about how that is tied together. So. Um, Maybe as we rework that, um, we can we can figure out how to do this best. Basically, it's um, I don't want to have to have in when we generate values files. I want to uh, have a flatter variable hierarchy than having things very deep in the values file. Um, so maybe we just need to reevaluate how we were writing those. Um, yeah, uh, I did I did propose a couple of solutions last week. Uh, maybe we can take that a little more seriously. Um, Sometime this week um, and see if that works for us. Okay. Specifically around uh, using um, the helpers.tpl uh, file, I think that will uh, that will uh, resolve a lot of these uh, deeply nested values issues. Okay. Thank thanks, Gopi. Um, and the last item was um, configuring uh, Volt service to talk to Volta. I think this is still something in progress that. I was doing. Uh, moving on, uh, integrating uh, OBS CNI with Cord. Um, I updated the patch that uh, uh, Hungwei made for this, but um, there's some discussion going on in the um, uh, Container Brigade channel about using Multus or using um, uh, a few of the CNI Genie, I think, for that. Um, I want to see how that 
discussion plays out before I put a lot more effort into this. It's still yeah, isn't. Yeah, I, that, that's a nice thing to do. Um, so right now, if we if you, the way we are trying to do this is uh, using uh, Ansible, uh, and uh, I think that is a little uh, destructive. There, there is definitely an easier way of doing this, essentially deploying the networks as Kubernetes resource themselves. Uh, I think we should pursue that since we are not, uh, since having a data plane network on uh, Cord is not top of our agenda, I think we should take our time in trying to do this right. So uh, even if you drop this for this print, that should be fine. Yeah, I'm going to knock it down to low priority and um, and we'll we'll evaluate that as needed. So I'm, I'm, yeah. until we make a decision, I'm not going to spend much time on that. Um, moving on, uh, XOS synchronizer to instantiate VNFs. Scott? Sure. So the first task here um, is, is to implement whatever changes we need to the XOS core data model. Uh, so there's this document Gopi and I have been working on uh, together. And uh, there's proposed uh, several changes to slices and other core objects that, that we may have to make. So the first task is to deal with those. Um, there's also a task which is to finalize the, the design um, that I'm hoping we knock a substantial chunk out of during the meeting uh, tomorrow. Um, and then there's uh, implementation work on the Kubernetes synchronizer. Uh, I left that kind of generic because until we have tomorrow's meeting, um, we don't know exactly what I will uh, be doing, but I expect out of that meeting will come tasks uh, for Gopi and I, and I will re-describe this one as appropriate to make it more specific. Okay, thanks, Scott. Uh, Volta on cord with Kubernetes. I don't see any items. I think we've completed most of those. Um, deploying OpenStack using Cola. Uh, Scott? Sure. So um, this first task is, well, it's related to that Kubernetes work we just described. So there's going to be some core modeling changes. Um, I think Matteo, Larry, and I, we had kind of a discussion within the document about how important it is to uh, port those changes over to the OpenStack synchronizer so it um, follows the same, um, the same sort of design as Kubernetes rather than having two different uh, designs. And we decided that was reasonably important, and we'd try to get it done for 6.0. Um, th this is probably lesser priority than the uh, Kubernetes synchronizer work itself. OK. Um, hey, um, I, I think it would be nice if, just in general, when we have a document describing something, and there's also an item in JIRA, if we get a link either in the description or in one of the comments about the documents, because I feel like if somebody looking at the JIRA might get a little bit disconnected from where the planning work is happening. Um, is it is a, a Jira Google Docs uh, deep integration like we have with Git or something like that? Uh, I, I I don't think I understood. Well, I don't think I understood the question, Gopi. Um, yeah, we can take this offline. Yeah. Yeah, um, I, I'm just thinking you stick it a link in the stick a link in the comments or or in the description if there's a if there's something that's a discussion or other um, other note you can make. That yeah, I'll add the uh, the XOS Kubernetes document to um, both this item as well as the, uh, the, the Kubernetes items in the other uh, epic. OK, thanks, Scott. Um, Kubernetes testing. So this is a new JIRA or a new um, epic I made. Um, so now that we have X or core on Kubernetes, at least the, um, a lot of the control plane and XOS portions, um, we need some new tests that actually use this functionality. And so I'm proposing that we make uh, the following tests. One is um, API test on top of Helm. So uh, previously we had a, uh, a test that was bring up XOS container with Docker and then run bring up the containers with Docker Compose, then run the API tests. Um, that is transitioning to bring up XOS on Kubernetes with Helm and then run the API tests. So this is probably going to use um, Andy's containerized API tests. Um, so, but 
Um, it involves getting some infrastructure set up. First off, um, setting up Kubernetes takes a while. So we probably, as, as previously, we didn't reinstall Docker every time we wanted to run an API test. We have to figure out how we either have a long running um, Kubernetes deployment or something we can spin up as an AMI image um, so we can skip the whole setup Docker, setup Kubernetes step. Um, then we need to have it run on changes to the Helm charts, XOS, or service repos. Uh, it needs to rebuild containers if it needs to, and then it needs to create a Helm chart config. Uh, so this is dependent on the, that other um, task that I have of having um, some automation of building the config for the Helm charts. Um, and it's going to involve uh, figuring out what QA resources are needed to make it happen. Um, so I, I'm probably going to end up working with um, uh, Kailash and Sujitra um, to, to figure out how to make this go. And maybe maybe I'll need to talk to Luca too if we need to allocate new resources for it. Yeah. Um, um, so a, a quick uh, piece of advice there. Um, if, you're, if you're trying to think about going down the route of creating uh, AMIs, there is a project uh, called Infracate. I think I did mention this to you a couple of times last year. Um, it, that lets you descriptively uh, define um, VMs, uh, AMIs. Uh, it's, a, it's an open source project uh, by, um, by Docker. Uh, and it, you, can, you can define all the components that go into the AMI. Uh, and it lets you build very efficiently um, what uh, what sort of uh, VMs or AMIs you want to create? It's, I think it, it would be worth uh, looking at that, Zach. Okay. It's called in, in yeah, if you could link me to it, that would be, that would be great. Um, I I also in this didn't mention what kind of Kubernetes pod we want. This might be something where we just use a Minikube, and if maybe there's a way to run and prep Minikube in a way that we can restart it in a new AMI image, that would be enough to get this going. I would very strongly advise against uh, using Minikube for anything other than just start deployments. And Minikube is very limited. It's a single VM deployment. As we scale, we will need a lot more. And I don't want us to be uh, tied into what Minikube does. Uh, right. This is just to run the API tests, which I don't think is sufficient. But um, we can have that discussion as well about how this, how this happens. Um, I'm going to take this one on, um, but I think think we need to, um, some of these, I have some other items that we need, that might, um, I might need help with. Just, I think I'm going to run out of time to get all of them going. Um, two other things, we need to have some sort of uh, way of testing our installation. So some way to set up a port on a brand new, um, using our, our deployment method. Um, so cube spray and um, th this is the equivalent of the virtual pod or cord in a box test. Um, so we have to implement a test that works like this, except for using Helm and Kubernetes. Uh, another one is a long running test that tracks master. So one of the advantages of Helm is that it lets you have versioned, um, uh, versioned containers and version, um, uh, and, and upgrade from one container version to another. Um, this is creating a long running pod that is updated with new containers as they're committed to master. Um, that might also involve doing a data model migration. Um, so I think we don't have that story fully figured out, but um, it would be nice to figure that out um, sometime. So I, I have a question. So, so for the new Jenkins, the first step in all of the tests is spin up a new PM on EC2 using the AMI that we specify. Correct, unless we have some other um, pod we can do it on. So for example, the physical hardware pods, we have VPN in to other locations, and we can do a full pod spin up. So I am. I think we have to go and look at what our resources are and determine what we can use either for this or for the, um, or wh whether we need to have um, some dedicated permanent resources for these. But so if it was easy, can we spin up multiple AMIs or just a single, um, I mean, like multiple VMs? I get the feeling that um, 
I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not sure whether Jenkins can spin up yeah. more than one executor for a job. Um, okay. I'm, I'm sort of just thinking this through. If we can make a custom AMI that has whatever we want in there, Right. And we talked about, well, maybe there was one that has Kubernetes in there, and we just spin that up, and then and it's got Helm already installed, and we just use that. Maybe we could also have one that also has OpenStack Helm already installed in there. And so just thinking about, can we have AMIs that have a pretty advanced environment already that we want to deploy and so we could run like the end-to-end -end, like port in a box test on every check-in if we had it we could easily spin up a VM that already has Kubernetes it's got OpenStack Helm all we need to do is install XOS and, and run the end-to-end the -end test yeah I think that would be possible assuming that we can bring up AMIs like that that's can you repeat, please? I we didn't catch that here. Uh, we, we, maybe maybe we broke up. Maybe right we're now. the breaking. <laughs> yeah. I think maybe we're the people who are breaking up. Sorry. Um. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, I actually agree with uh, with Andy. Uh, I think we should uh, we should. Okay, he agrees with me. That's all. I uh, being able to, in a very fine. Oh, God. Can you guys hear me? Not really. It's it's going in and out. Sorry, I think it's a problem on our end. I hear you, Kofi. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, well, for what it's worth. Right, well, somebody else. I say basically even spend. Specify uh, the uh, definition language, um, and I think it will. Looks like uh, we might not have Arizona. We're in and out. Yeah, sorry about that. I don't, I don't know what's going on. Looks OK now. Okay. Um, we didn't catch much of that, Gopi. Sorry. Yeah, we can take it offline. No, no worries. OK. OK. Um, so I, I'm going to start on doing the API test. The other things are. We lost you again, guys. Okay, I, I re-upped our network connection here. Um, hopefully you can hear us now. Sorry about that. Okay. Oh, great. Um, alrighty, so uh, I'm gonna move on. Um, so software versioning in core. So we have a bunch of Python libraries that we needed to, um, if we're gonna split up the containers and build them standalone, um, Previously, we had a hierarchy of the base, then a library container, then a synchronizer container, then a then the actual synchronizer. And so, one of the goals was to split that up. Um, and to do that, um, getting the library container out of the process, um, one of the idea we had was to take the Python libraries like Xos Gen X and Xos Config, 
and put those into uh, libraries. I think one of these it shouldn't be ex there shouldn't be XOS config twice, but I have a I can fix that. Um, so yeah, there's also an XOS client. Yeah, I th maybe you meant XOS client. Yeah, I can change that on one of these. Um, so uh, the goal of this is to take these containers and or take these uh, Python libraries and actually publish them to PyPy and then pull them based on version. So um, how we do this and who ends up doing this um, is still to be determined. Um, I think um, Scott and Mateo were the main people working on these. Um, I'm not sure if you guys want to do that or if you want, um, or who, who, sh who should end up handling this. Yeah, so we have them versioned now, so that's maybe the first step in getting them published. Um, how do you see the development workflow working for this? Um, I mean, I think the deployment workflow is, is obvious. We just pull the one that's on PyPy, but for development, um, how do you see that working? So historically, unlike with Sopin's um, PLYX Proto, you can specify a, uh, rather than a version, you can specify a URL to pull the, uh, with Git to pull the uh, version. So during development, it would be using that, that URL syntax in, in, um, in the pip uh, dependency file. And then when, when you want to actually release a version, then you update it, push it to PyPy, and then um, change your uh, uh, list of requirements to have the released version. That's, that's at least the way that um, when I talked to Sopin about doing this before he left, um, that he proposed we handle this. Does that sound like it would work? Yeah, it, it sounds reasonable. Maybe it's the the least worst thing to do. Um, I, I mean, the the encumbrance to developers is the, it won't be necessarily easy just to build a container using the code that's checked out. You know, your current working copy of the code, you'll actually have to commit it and then set that URL to pull your commit. Um, but maybe that's a necessary evil. Um, yeah, I think I, we can achieve this, but maybe we'll take it offline as to the, actually how to do it. Yeah, one, one of the other things that this might involve is currently some of these are within the um, XOS uh, source code repo. We may want to break them out and put them in their own repos um, so that they will have their own history. And uh, I, I think that might be required to push them to PyPy. Yeah, we can look into that. I think Mateo and I have talked about possibly splitting those up. Uh, mm -hmm. there, you know, there's always an issue issue of proliferation of repositories that we end up with a lot of them but maybe this is only three or four new ones and it's not that bad yeah right that that's that's what makes sense um, or that's what I think makes sense um, when Matteo gets back we'll talk about this um, this is all very good justification for changing the, <laughs> the start and end dates of these to be Tuesday Wednesday um, okay so um, moving on uh, the last is issues without epics. Um, I have one item here that's sort of a low priority, um, implementing an Acord broker service for registration of endpoints. Acord is, um, I talked to the Acord guys earlier today, and um, they want to uh, start having a, uh, start to play, de are developing services that work with Acord. Um, there's a design that's been out there for a while, but nobody has spent the time to actually implement it. Basically, what this does is, uh, for for Acord services that have an endpoint, like if they have an HTTP endpoint, have XOS keep track of the endpoints. Um, it's basically a, man a way to manage a list of, of of endpoints that are on that network or that Acord services offer, um, rather than actually brokering or proxying their data. Um, it just provides a list of services. So I don't think it's a a very difficult service to implement, um, uh, but it's not a high priority at this point. It may raise in priority if it's needed for some of the Volta work or um, some of the other integration work we need to do.
Um, I think that's it. Is there anything that um, people saw in the list that didn't, um, or there wasn't in the list that needed to be in the list, or um, that uh, they think needs to be covered in this sprint but didn't get mentioned? Nothing from my look. Okay. Um, all right, I'm going to stop the recording. Uh, thank you all for participating. Um, I think we have a pretty good list of things to work on. Um, and let's get started. Uh, bye, all. Cheers, guys. Bye.